of the Turbulence Mixing and Beyond Conference in 2017. And in this section, we will have talks which are discussing the turbulent processes using experimental data and analysis, as well as the mathematical works. And it would be maybe I will see, like, you know, if I will be giving my own presentation. And then after this, we will make the program closure. And then the members of the organizing and evaluation committees will be staying uh, for evaluate to, to, to compare the results for the best poster award and the unscientist award. However, we are still in a good shape, I think. We should proceed now with the work of uh, Professor Redonda <coughs> and his collaborators yeah, well, on Rickmeyer Meshkov mixing and fractal analysis. Yes, okay, please, thank sir. you. Uh, I think that you can hear me. Well, uh, I will come in on several aspects. Uh, and yeah, first of all, uh, I will try to convince you that there is more to see in the complex interfaces, and not only in Rickmeyer Mieszkow. Uh, for example, um, this is. Uh, let me see how. Okay, this is. Okay, I have to go forward like this. Next slide. Well, um, and some of the motivation uh, spans to uh, astrophysical and uh, uh, environmental flows. Well, but uh, this is one of the um, important uh, examples of a enormous uh, galaxy sort of Rayleigh Taylor or Rick by Mieszkow like a uh, uh, super galactic structure and at the same time you have very small scale processes uh, in uh, shocks and we want to understand from the large scales to the small scales and I will be concentrating on scaling, basically. Uh, this is an old story, because you know uh, Takanawa's wave, okay, and you notice that this sort of observed filamentary structure, well, uh, is probably um, more revealing to what it seems, uh, because uh, not always we see all that is there, and uh, not even in the experiment. So you sometimes have to go to higher order processes or to nonlinear processes to detect really what is there. Because in simulations, uh, David Young for example, compared different <laughs> types of simulations, and of course you see that the topology is totally different from simulation to simulation, and uh, you don't have to perform a multifractal analysis to see by eye uh, that, well, the resolution really uh, is very different. Uh, the same type of uh, simulations uh, from uh, above, and this is well known, it was published by Shersana et al. So, and uh, you see that, uh, well, they have some sort, sort of structure, but when you zoom in the interface, and I would say a bit further, when you zoom at either side of the interface, you find a different story. Uh, and this is still to be examined. Okay, mm, well, this is uh, you know, something which uh, I will leave you to read mm, while I uh, comment a little bit on the two basic aspects of what, well, when do you decide it's Rayleigh really Taylor, when do you decide it's Rick Meyer Mieszkow, well, uh, if uh, you have uh, the acceleration uh, and you have it in time and, uh, well, it, it is smooth uh, and it increases, that's really Rayleigh Taylor. Uh, in a limiting case, like in the shock, 
experiments. We did that, uh, and this was a uh, Paul Linden experiment and many other uh, setups paid by the Atomic Weapons Establishment in Cambridge. And eventually we would get these uh, growing, growing fronts. What happens if you just give it a shock? And our interesting idea that Jacobs has uh, exploded in the Lawrence Livermore lab uh, is to do like the typical, and I want you to uh, try it with a tequila glass. This is what Mexicans were doing for many, many years. You just bang it into the table and you shoot up the, uh, okay, uh, you can do a more or less sophisticated Rayleigh um, analysis, but if the density, uh, with height, the density, with the height, in the basic Rayleigh-Taylor analysis, it began uh, being heavier on top and lighter, uh, Stuart, Stuart DL, and uh, I would, Dalziel et al, yeah, between 19, nothing, well, 98, 218, uh, uh, has tried, <laughs> You know very well the different configurations. You can have uh, something like this. Uh, uh, and with this configuration, it's possible to measure something which is very difficult. It's the mixing efficiency. Uh, but uh, you do it per unit area. Uh, and there's different combinations between how the potential energy goes to kinetic energy and again to potential energy. Uh, and this is a complex uh, process. But uh, I will concentrate on well, what happens, for example, when this hits the uh, floor, then you shoot uh, and have a different type of uh, flow because the main difference is that uh, here, the acceleration is just a heavy side you know, function, uh, and there's no or you can have something like this, uh, and then you accelerate and then you decelerate. This was one of the problems uh, in the initial test because uh, everything that goes up, it must come uh, down. Uh, but I will continue with some uh, more uh, detail uh, visual analysis, and I will set up for the, uh, okay, like, second. Fractal. Uh, it's important to notice that there can be different fractal dimensions for everything. Uh, even in the same experiment, uh, you see that the fractal dimension of the uh, vorticity is not the same as that for the uh, helicity uh, or the uh, hyper viscosity and so on. But going to uh, yeah, the um, Rayleigh Taylor and Richmond front. Okay, the velocity jump, uh, like in a shock, and I will not go over the experiments, but Laie's uh, thesis and what uh, Lazaroas and all the group have been doing with uh, front or plane and modified interfacial waves is really very important. Uh, the interesting thing uh, is and you know this is all uh, history, but the interesting thing is, well, uh, what do we learn extra from <laughs> things like that? Uh, and you've already seen this very, very often. 
uh, the type of uh, old experiments were like this. Uh, this was the first configuration, but now it's improved a lot. But I must tell that many of Jacob's experiments, uh, they include, um, well, uh, even if there's mixing some uh, dye um, high parental number or um, uh, say either um, there is a uh, artificial smoothing not only because of the surface tension uh, in cases there are clearly different fluids but uh, also because uh, say other processes are taking place. Many of the experiments initially were done on Healy show cells, uh, and there you could have a, I could call it a tertiary Kelvin Helmholtz insta instability coming from the shear from the two sides. Uh, and these were some of the interesting uh, new experiments in which you say, well, where the hell is a secondary line coming from? And uh, Andrews uh, showed that for sh very large-scale shear, Rayleigh Taylor. But again, as Shersana said last uh, in her talk, uh, it's not the same to investigate the structure of a Rayleigh Taylor or a Kelvin Helmholtz instability than an accelerated or a non-uniform. And non-uniform can be in time or in space. Uh, so um, this sort of comparison of different uh, interfaces uh, is what I would like to uh, point out a little bit in a parameter space. And when you have, okay, like the um, differences between that's the number of boxes and the size of the box, uh, you're really looking at some of the isolines you were seeing before. But uh, if there is mixing, if there is not just uh, scalar detection, but uh, velocity detection, the problem is that now you can get three-dimensional velocity profiles with resolution, and it's very difficult to do that in the experiments. Uh, but uh, what is true is that an infinitely sharp interface is uh, impossible. Uh, uh, and within the range of uh, intensities, uh, each of the fractal dimensions of the different intensities, here you just, it's very easy, just count the number of boxes which is covered by the complex interface, and it has to be between, if you have a log-log plot, this is the scale of the, of the box, uh, well, it would be um, the uh, inverse, so the smaller this is the uh, scale, the higher the numbers, if the slope is two, then the whole surface is covered, but again, this can be a 3D or a N or a um, multi-dimensional space. Uh, and the experimental uh, information. But notice, this is for one value. Uh, you can have even in the same process, you have 
different, uh, okay, processes that modify the topology of your flow. And if here you have a dominant uh, vortex or a, uh, or a secondary or tertiary instability, and for example, uh, this is what you normally see very clearly, but you don't just see this, uh, you really have secondary and three-dimensional complex instabilities as soon as you increase the rate of number. Of course, uh, this type of parameterization, uh, uh, sometimes it doesn't show in the first order statistics. And notice, if uh, n is one, okay, we, it's the mean. Uh, if n, n is two, the second order is the diffusion. If n is three, it's the skewness. If n is four, it's the kurtosis. And here is where you begin to look at intermittency. Uh, and uh, from structure functions, uh, you know that uh, a PDF does not tell you much. Uh, um, and you can say, say the, the mean, the variance, square root of the variance is the a standard deviation. The um, skewness, uh, you can have it like this or like this. Uh, and all have the same mean. Uh, I like and uh, it was the first time I realized that stratification has a huge effect on the kurtosis, uh, which is really uh, talked about the like the intermittency. Because if you have something like this, you have a huge intermittency, which is it really means the. Uh, very strange, far away from the mean. On the other hand, if you have a, um, a flat, okay, kurtos in Greek means actually flat, then you have something like that. And basically, this leads you to the intermittency. Uh, uh, everybody thinks so there's only one type of intermittency. It doesn't matter whether it's in time or in space. And, of course, Taylor's hypothesis should not be valid. But the important thing is that, well, we just compare this distance. So what you actually measure as the six-order structure function, uh, so the relationship between Topology and intermittency is very uh, close. And, of course, the topology in uh, filling up the space is given by the fractal dimension. So the main point is then see, I will comment something which is not different at both sides of uh, front. Okay, uh, that still has to be proven uh, seriously, but um, how you define it? Well, as a single intermittency, it just twice the third order structure function minus the sixth order structure function. But, uh, okay, if you really measure that, you get a wide range of between almost 0 0.1 and, and 1. Uh, uh, intermittency is not a unique parameter. So probably, yes, and this is 
Well, the actual intermittency uh, also is related to the Kolmogorov basic hypothesis, but uh, K61, uh, it really eventually says that uh, uh, goes like, uh, no. Well, uh, okay, so it's like um, eventually mu prime Q over L, and that leads to the straight line, but because this is related to the correlation, uh, this should be squared. Uh, so, what is important is all of the type of structures, because in stratified flows, you don't only have the, well, uh, adult number, uh, I prefer to call it the Richardson number, but or, or some relationship, uh, let's call it density interface or density difference or adult Okay, but the average, or it's normally twice. Uh, uh, but, for example, you can have a Reynolds number effect. You can have, I, pre, I prefer to use Richardson in a number, but it's similar. You have a Rossby number effect, rotation, and other type of compressibility and all sorts of body forces. And in principle, uh, I will just show you okay, these sort of complex parameter space where if you point out different fractal dimensions in different interfaces, you get a chaos. Uh, it's not the same at all. And I will show uh, some more. Uh, uh, these were basic experiments for a range of adult numbers, uh, which, of course, if you use mercury, then it's smooth. Everything is smooth. The density difference is so high. But the density difference um, really influences more surface tension than other things. Uh, uh, this type of complex structures, which you will see, were calculated in, in Moscow, uh, and uh, you begin to have these mm, secondary and tertiary spikes, but uh, still, uh, the uh, actual inner resolution is much more complex. Mm. And, uh, for example, if you can detect, okay, the basic topology of the growth of these Rigby-Biestro scales, well, to fit a line, if you would fit a, a Lyapunov exponent, uh, which is not a bad idea, is that it grows exponentially. But an exponential has all of the possible power laws. Uh, so when you have, and this is uh, a secondary structure or a large or an initial eddy, that really has a surprising long memory, and it also has a surprising long memory on the structure of the, of the fractal dimension and how different parts of the interface have different parts, uh, different fractal dimensions, and not only that, different uh, qualifiers, because uh, Fries wrote his whole book on uh, intermediacy on homogeneous flows. Uh, so you need another Fries uh, for, for the students. It's an interesting reference, but it's not the Bible, so it's not the, uh, and of course, damn color effects at both sides of the interface, 
will be different, not only because the solute or the diffusivity can be different, but because the topology is different. And uh, there's a whole thing, okay, you can compare it with, and remember Malik's in the presentation, now we will do a large scale mm, intermittent fractal force experiments, uh, but for example, these are some results of what I was telling. The fractal dimensions go all over the place and uh, they have to be treated, okay, from the simple to the complicated. Uh, here, for example, we compare the multifractal flows of single plumes uh, or multiple plumes, uh, Anya Matulka uh, participated in this experiment, so uh, uh, you know that the work. And even that or this type of analysis, and now I will generalize, can be applied to helicity in the atmosphere or um, even uh, half vorticity and helicity cascades. And look at the scaling. Uh, like you did for uh, acceleration. Uh, for example, this is a uh, vorticity evolution. And here you also have to compare the uh, multifractal uh, self-similarity of velocity, vorticity, higher order intermittency, etc. And I will finish, more or less, showing some more uh, <laughs> wind uh, information, which is really uh, Yagwe and Edal and some other colleagues. And Claude Cambon is uh, here, a bit younger, like me, but uh, this was in Villanova in La Geltru, and you're all invited eventually to come before the Marseille conference. We have to arrange who wants to lecture basically for the student, Erkovtag, Euromec, uh, Simne uh, course, but uh, I think Marseille will be to uh, Jean-Francois knows very well uh, in Marseille, but uh, perhaps you don't remember Robert Keen from the state, and well, this is just uh, what I wanted to say, and well, I will not uh, extend. Yeah. <laughs> so thank you so much.